And it's cool that, like, that wrestling can be kind of that gateway to that, like, you know, to more of that acceptance. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Who's Joe YouTube Edition. There are places out there that will accept you for who you are. Uh, I think the simplest one is lead by example. I, I like it a lot, to be perfectly honest. Today, I am here with Heart Eater Moxie. And why don't you go ahead and tell us a little about yourself. <laughs> my name is Heart Eater Moxie, or Faye Grand, if you want to go by my, my real names. I am uh, an artist. I am a wrestler, uh, filmmaker, writer. I kind of do a little bit of everything. Uh, but my most recent venture is into wrestling. I am... This month is my one-year anniversary, uh, so I started training one year ago. Uh, I've been having matches for five months now, and I've been having like a really a lot of really cool opportunities here on the West Coast wrestling scene. And uh, I, like I said, I'm also an artist. Uh, I'm a comic book maker. I'm a graphic designer. I do a lot of like album covers and T-shirt designs and things like that. And uh, yeah, yeah. Before we start the staring contest, I'm going to ask you that out of all the characters you've created through comics, through writing, and through filmmaking, which of them do you think would do the best in a staring contest? So, I draw a lot of, like, demons, a lot of, like, hellish creatures. I just, like, spooky goth stuff. Um, so, I... I don't think I could pinpoint a singular one, but I've definitely drawn like a lot of like really creepy creatures, like tons of eyes. I love drawing demon eyes, and uh, I bet I could find one. I could. I bet I could find one. I, I had like a like in the, in my next comic that I'm doing. I have like a really creepy like uh, looking spider like villain dude. And I bet he could. <laughs> I, 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 I think I would have difficulty beating a, a spider villain in a staring contest. I don't know <laughs> if I'd know which eye to look at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now we're going to jump into the traditional first question. The start of the staring contest is if you could collaborate with anybody on anything, who would it be? And we will count down from five and start the staring contest when you start answering. Does that sound good to you? That sounds good to me. <laughs> five, four, three, two, one. If I could collab with anyone on anything, it would be my boyfriend, Deshade. I love working with him just in like anything. Like, whether it's just real-life stuff or doing things for wrestling, we just had a match this past weekend, so, like, that was a lot of fun to do together. Uh, but I think I'd want to do, like, some kind of show, whether it be, like, a singular wrestling show or a, like, promotion, like, to run a promotion. Um, I just, dang it. <laughs> I definitely blinked. I definitely blinked. <laughs> but I would definitely want to work with him on, a, on, on some kind of wrestling show or some kind of show. Like, I love, I love doing creative things with my boyfriend. It's so much fun. Well, it was a valiant effort. You, you definitely <laughs> gave your best shot on the not blinking. But I am now 41 and 0. And for those of you who have watched my videos before, you know at this point I'm going to attempt to go the rest of the interview without blinking as well. Good luck to you, sir. Well, thank you. <laughs> Why don't you tell us the origin of your wrestling persona, Heart Eater Moxie? So Heart Eater Moxie uh, is more or less based off like a character from uh, my most recent comic book. Uh, it's called Slay. I've made one issue of it so far. And the main character in it is a vampire. Say it out loud. Who, uh, his name is Bane Sorrows. 
and she kind of like becomes a vampire by untraditional means and the really the whole story is basically like her trying to get revenge and just finding ways to gather more kind of black magic and absorb de- other demons and things like that so that she can become like an ultra powerful demon who can like rule and conquer and things like that um i'm a, like a big fan of the disgaea series i don't know if you know what that is it's, like some japanese like uh, tactical rpg they're just like fun little goofy like anime like rpgs for like the playstation but i've always loved the series and like the comics kind of based on like a lot of that stuff and also like wrestling and then i kind of based my wrestling character off the version of that I made of myself in the comics. So they're kind of like similar characters, but just like in different universes. So obviously you have a, a strong creative spirit. And one thing I've, I've seen kind of emerging in wrestling is the idea of these cinematic wrestling matches that aren't necessarily done in the traditional ring setting. What do you think about the emergence and the potential of cinematic wrestling? I I like it a lot, to be perfectly honest. I I actually, for college, I went to film school. I uh, I studied film, mostly writing, but I, I've definitely made like a lot of films as well. And when I first started seeing things like that, like with Lucha Underground, when it first started doing like these really cinematic, like kind of backstories or backstage segments, it was really interesting. It like it definitely brought something completely different to wrestling and it allowed them to kind of be like less based in reality. They could do a lot of like supernatural things. Even when the WWE started to do cinematic matches, like they brought in, brought that into it as well. It was like, finally the undertaker can do all the like crazy, like magical shit, but in a match. Um, Even with, like, how they did Bray Wyatt and John Cena, like, that was just, like, a crazy, like, acid trip of a, of a match. It's, like, I, like, I know a lot of people don't look at it as, like, as much of a match, kind of, because of just, because of what it was, but, like, it was cool that, like, in a weird way, that was a match with Bray Wyatt was, like, in your head, like, it's not even, like, really, like, a physical fight, it's just, like, it's just he's fucking with you like in your head that's crazy like that that brings so many like um possibilities for different types of characters i feel like not maybe not every character has to be someone who can fight in the ring and like you don't have to use those characters just to be managers but they can also be like problems for people because they can do things in in a world where there's like more things you can do with it Wrestling has a lot of limitations to being live, but it's it's cool when you can like mix the two together. One thing I've noticed as compared to like eighties wrestling or seventies wrestling, that when it was a man's world back then, you're seeing a lot more energy inter wrestling. You're seeing trans wrestlers, you're seeing men versus women, mm-hmm. women versus women. What do you see the future of gender in wrestling being? So I think about this a lot. Like, I am a non-binary person, and as of four, I think coming up on five years ago, like, I've been on hormones. So, like, like gender in wrestling is very important to me. Um, women's wrestling and LGBT wrestling are why I got into wrestling. Like I, I liked it for a while and I watched a lot of men's wrestling and I still do watch a lot of men's wrestling because it is the majority of wrestling, but like those places and those matches don't nearly like identify with me as much as like women's and LGBT shows and matches and things like that. I think it's there's going to be a big change. As much as I want to be in like women's, I also want there to be more changes in wrestling where it doesn't have to have a women's league. 
or that women can be in main title contention or heavyweight title contention. It's awesome. It's really awesome to see. It's really exciting to be a part of what I've been a part of on a very small scale just in Vegas, but like also have like kind of been accompanied to with like the larger scenes and like everything that's going out on the East Coast, even things that happen in GCW uh, with like Effie shows and like those, all those things are like, those are like my, those are like the the places I want to be. You got to love what Effie's doing. And I, I, I met Effie once and he's easily genuinely one of the nicest people, people I've ever met. And you and, you mentioned the big guys, but I, I really think in the indies overall, you're, you're starting to see a lot more of the blurring of the lines of gender and more acceptance. Like even even in the heart of the South, where I am, I am in Alabama, New South Pro Wrestling had a, uh, a intergender match for their title for their heavyweight title between Kenzie Page and a, a big hunk of a man, Derek Neal. And that was an absolute amazing match that got a huge pop, which is, I mean, you wouldn't think that in Alabama that you would see something like that. And it's cool that like that wrestling can be kind of that gateway to that, like, you know, to more of that acceptance. So obviously, I mean, diversity and inclusion is getting better, but around the around the world, it's still not where it needs to be. Like, if you look at the majority of indie cards, most of them, especially in the South, will have like maybe one or two black people. Maybe one women's match, maybe two women's match matches, but 75, 80% of the card is still going to be white men. What do you think wrestling can do as a whole to improve the overall diversity and inclusion? It's a tough answer because I feel like there's a lot of different answers to it. Or it's a tough question to answer because I think there's a lot of different answers to it. Um, one of them would, I, I think the simplest one is lead by example. You're going to have all these major promotions and they're, they've got to be in some way, shape, or form doing that. I got to be honest, WWE's been better about it than almost anyone actual black champions, actual like black wrestlers who are considered a threat or uh, like a champion or like someone top of the card. We're finally seeing that their women's wrestling is, I think only second to impacts women. And at least in major companies that I can think of, um, they do a really good job of it. Like some of it's hit and misses sometimes, but they've actually built stars out of the women. I love AEW, but they're the most looked at promotion right now. And everyone's just a white dude. And I don't get that. I really don't get that. I, they, they've been so hit or miss with their women's division too. And it's not cause they don't have, the people, I just, I just don't feel like they try to make them like big stars. Like they, they really don't try and make them as important. I, I don't remember what the last pay per view. I don't know if it was. I don't remember. I don't remember. It was Double or Nothing or something like that. The last one I watched of AEW, and there was literally one women's match, and a battle royal, a whole battle royal that I think was ten minutes. It was like the fastest battle royal I've ever seen in my entire life. It was so quick. And there was a lot of people in it. I think Kiera Hogan came out and like got dropped out the second she came out. I don't even think I saw her face for more than like one second on screen. Like, what is that? That's, I feel like, yeah, leading by example is a, is a big importance. I think the other big problem, and this is more on the indie side of things because this is 
this is this is where the schools are and that's this toxic masculinity bullshit where we're going to bring you in a wrestling but we're going to beat the shit out of you to try and get you out of it or we're going to do all this hazing to you so that you don't want to come back again or with everything that's happened within the past few years or everything that's at least come to light in the past few years all these creeps that creep and prey on there's a reason why not a lot of women get into wrestling they don't want to deal with that shit the hazing's not worth it and the harassment's not worth it i got really really lucky where i started training at versus is a very very diverse place in management in in the people that train there I got very lucky. I didn't come in there and I had to fight for my place because I was trans. They just accept me because I was trans. And I got to grow there. And a year in, I've gotten to do a lot of shit that a lot of people haven't had those those kind of opportunities and they've been wrestling a lot longer than me. Where do you see yourself five years from now? Just in whatever capacity. I definitely want to get into some more production things. I, I started wrestling at 30 years old. I'm not going to be like, pretend like I have all the time in the world to uh, become amazing. You know, I've, I've already, I already got some mileage in my body just from living and not even doing wrestling. So, but I, I would love to get into more production side, whether it's run a promotion or help people run promotions or just get into booking or some kind of creative field in wrestling. Um, Really, any of that is, like, where I would want to be. Um, hopefully, also, just, like, more comics. Like, I definitely want it, to... It's been nice that I've had, like, so much, I guess, success, or at least, like, notice in wrestling so quickly. Uh, but ne I never got that for my comic books. And it's been, like, I've been, I've been making comic books for... Well, technically, I have been since I was, like, a little, little kid. But, like, I would say I've tried to be more professional about it, like, for at least 10 years now. And I never really got anywhere with it. And I, I still want to do that. Like, that's still a really big thing to me. And I have some cool ideas. And I have some cool, like, people who want to work with me kind of lined up. And so I'm hoping some, like, really cool stuff comes out of that. Well, that's awesome. If you could go back to your 15-year-old self with the knowledge you have now, what would you tell yourself? Well, that, that's a pretty simple answer for a trans person. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would definitely notify them about all that. Uh, I, uh, I would want to, but more importantly than just like telling a younger version of myself, that I was trans or queer or gay or anything like that. Just, I would want to try and let them know that it, it'll be okay that you are. I grew up like in the middle of nowhere. I had no queer support whatsoever. There's no LGBTQ community. There's nothing. Um, even when I started transitioning, I was still kind of living out there and the trans support group I went to was, five people and I was the youngest at like 26 years old so like I wish I would have just let myself know that it's like even though you're scared and you're not in an environment that is accepting of this like you can get to places that are there are places out there that will accept you for who you are and hopefully that would I don't know get me to like be a less suppressed person. I think I, I stayed in the closet for like a really, really, really long time because I was super afraid of like friends and family and what the rest of the world would do to me. And if I would have just had one older queer person in my life to just like kind of give me not even guidance, but just like the advice of like, it can get better and you can be in a better place. Like that would have meant the world to me so that's what i would tell myself 
Alrighty, well, I guess we've hit the point of the video where I'm going to get you to say I was not able to beat Joe in a staring contest. Alright. I was not able to beat Joe in a staring contest. Now, one thing I like to do <laughs> is just to help me get guests is I like to get my guests to call out somebody else to come up be a guest, go against me in a staring contest. So is there somebody that you would like to call out to come on and be a guest? How about Sandra Moon? Okay. Uh, call that motherfucker out. She's beating me twice now. I'm so sad about it. Calling Sandra Moon out. I bet you can't beat it, Joe in a staring contest because... Damn it, I need my revenge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sandra Moon, you've been called out to come on, be a guest, and go up against me in a steering contest. I'm now 41-0. and 0. I've gone 40 minutes without blinking. And uh, at this point, what do you have going on? What do you have to talk about? What do you have to plug? Ooh, okay. So, actually, this weekend... Me and the Shade are going to be in Oakland. We are going to be wrestling at two shows that weekend. Uh, the first one is a there is a Pride Festival. I don't I don't have like the actual thingy for it. There's some kind of Pride Festival going on in Oakland uh, with the wrestling shows, uh, but uh, also East Bay Pro Wrestling. It's going to be my first time there. Uh, me and DeShade are going to be tag teaming together again. I love tagging with him, so I'm super excited about it. And they're giving us a title shot at the tag team championships. So my one year in, this is going to be my third title shot this month. So I'm super excited about it. Um, a lot of really cool people out there. A lot of people I've met through like some of the LGBT shows here in Vegas. So... Uh, it'll be nice to see them again, and it'll be nice to meet like some new friends that like I have on Twitter and everything. Um, it's always cool to go to a new place, and uh, it'll be my first out-of-state show, so congratulations to myself on that. Well, this video may or may not be posted after those events, so if oh, it is okay. post okay. if it is posted <laughs> after those events, then you all of you could at least go back and see how moxie did in yeah, those events back and watch them um if if you are unable to watch or attend any of those please follow me on twitter i'm absolutely hilarious uh you can also my pinned my pinned post you can read my comic it's absolutely free you can read my entire comic there it's 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 not super long it's really cute and also badass if you like any kind of like anime fighting shit i think you'll like it um so there's always that too and uh yeah well, I will put a link to your Twitter in the video description, a link to Versus Pro in the video description, a link to your comic in the video description, anything you want me to put a link to in the video description. That's going to be it for another episode of Who's Joe YouTube Edition. If you haven't already gone and followed Moxie on Twitter, do that right now. We'll just kind of stare at you until you do. <laughs> Alrighty, now that you've done that There will be one video down here at the bottom left That I've recommended One video down here at the bottom right That YouTube has recommended Watch one of them, watch both of them Watch all of them And uh, we'll see you the next time Bye